everyone, and welcome to Cocktail Culture with Citywide Liquors. This week, we have on another beer person. It's been wonderful. We got a, a nice, solid selection of beer recently. This week, we have Nathan Thompson, the Northern Indiana Territory Manager from Rheingeist Brewery in Cincinnati, Ohio. How's it going, man? Doing well. How are you? It doing well. You sound so great on that mic. It's, it's oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so, I, when you yeah. when you said the, another beer person, I was wondering. I was like, it's called cocktail. Uh, I know, I know. I, I, <laughs> it is kind of a uh, you know maybe the brand isn't strong enough yet. Maybe I should change it. Uh, but I feel like I like the name too much to the, the, change it as at this point. I'm only like ten episodes in at this point, but uh, we are still. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, all right, now I don't know. And then, you know, what uh, all the good beer podcast names are already taken. And also I will be having like wine and liquor people on and whatnot too. So it, uh, yep. it alternates occasionally. <laughs> um, so how long have you been in the industry, the alcohol industry in general? Um, so kind of on and off for about nine years. Um, I started just part-time uh, as a bartender as like my fun job while I had a an adult job doing something else. Right. <laughs> um, and so it was like, I mean, I was work for like three years. I worked essentially seven days a week, Monday through Friday would be my normal job. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday at, uh, at black acre down here in Indianapolis. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I wanted to make beer my full-time career. It's just black Acre specifically. I mean, a super small brewery and didn't really have what I was looking for as far as a full-time job. I didn't necessarily want to be a bartender or server full time. I wanted something more administrative, but mm -hmm. they had, Black Acre has like five owners, so they were kind of handling all administrative duties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was kind of hard to make that a full time, and um, so then eventually I obviously moved to Cincinnati and got in with Ryan Geist. Um, so I've been with Ryan Geist for about six years now. Uh, started just as a bartender at Ryan Geist as well. Oh wow. Yeah. Um, and probably, I was probably annoying, uh, constantly telling my bosses, like, I want to get promoted. I want to get promoted. I want to get promoted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I've had, I think, six promotions at Rheingeist. Um, nice. And so now I'm here as territory manager back in Indiana, my home state. Amazing. Yeah, wonderful. Well, that is awesome to it's hear. It's been quite a journey. Right. Yeah, for sure. Just, you know, all the way to Cincinnati and back. He had to, you know, all that love for Kings Island. You have to take those trips often. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the entire time I was in Cincinnati, I never went to Kings Island. <laughs> you went there more when you lived in Indiana than. Absolutely. Than in <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. Say, so, I mean, if you're going to the north side, you're going to Jungle Gyms anyway. You're not necessarily going to. <laughs> Yeah, Jungle Gems is all the adventure I need. I don't, I don't need a roller coaster as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Anywhere that I can get like forty-five different types of hummus, like I'm cool with it. I don't need to go. <laughs> yeah, I don't need to hit the water park. That's fine. But that's my like adult water park is like the hummus bar, the olive bar. Yeah. That's fine. For for me, it was between do I spend more money on beer or on cheese? It's right. a close, <laughs> yeah. close race between the two. Oh yeah, do I need a barrel of Parmesan today? <laughs> this will be an of investment. You do. Yes, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so like you said, you, um, you started bartending at Black Acre, uh, while you're doing another job, what exactly brought you to want to work for like seven days a week doing beer alongside another job as well? Um, so, I mean, I got into craft beer probably when I was 24, I'd say mm -hmm. before that it was pretty much just Killian's Irish Red. Right. Uh, that, that was my go-to. <laughs> Maybe a Sam Adams cherry wheat if I was feeling frisky in there. The classic um, craft beer. Absolutely. Um, and so I don't. I I started really appreciating the people that worked at breweries that I would go visit as well. Just the the social aspect and the camaraderie and kind of how everybody just seemed to kind of be working for one goal type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was working for state government at the time as a social worker, and state government is not as fun um, right, right especially social work where i was specifically with department of child services and removing abused children from their homes and uh while it was rewarding from a personal aspect right it was also very exhausting and you didn't really feel like you had support necessarily from your higher ups right um 
whereas that's the total opposite in the beer world where <laughs> everybody is working together to accomplish something mm-hmm. and you're, you're constantly getting support from other people even even competing breweries you're getting support uh, because we all understand we're in this together to fight other breweries that I won't necessarily name, but you know, the big ones that might seek to crash, uh, crush craft beer essentially. So, right. Definitely buying up hop contracts and things like that on. Uh, uh, yeah. Some anti-competitive nonsense. Yeah. For sure. Ordering the market. Yes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, and so it's like, you know, even though Monday through Friday, I was working a normal job, like Saturday and Sunday working at the brewery it felt like vacation still even though i was working right that's awesome yeah it's nice to just like you can kind of unwind while also getting paid it's kind of it's like all right yeah i can handle it it's a little different absolutely (laughs) different environment that's for sure um so with craft beer you know things turn over often we're always seeing changes uh so what do you think are uh the trends that you think that are here to stay? Uh, What trends do you think are going to go away quickly? And which ones do you think that are currently happening? Do you think are going to persist? You know, I, I sit in this weird juxtaposition of, of wanting to call myself a beer nerd, a beer snob, but at the same time, like understanding that I I also really appreciate just a good Vienna lager, you know? So it's like, I sit in this weird place of liking both of those things whereas most people tend to prefer one or the other um so as far as like trends that i see on like beer snobs pages and things like that (laughs) obviously hazy stuff i don't think is going away anytime soon um you know it's to the point now where it's tough to even go find a west coast ipa somewhere Mm -hmm. it's everything is hazy everything is juicy and i mean they taste good and they taste good to a very wide (laughs) a very wide array of consumers. Mm. So I don't see those going away anytime soon. Um, I think the, you know, super heavily fruited Berliner vices and sours, I think, you know, they're a trend right now. I, I don't think they're going to grow that much because they are very, I mean, they're very sweet mm. and, you typically don't want to sit down and drink four of them in a row. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's while they're still, they're going to be persistent, but I don't think that they're like market share is going to grow that much because you're having one and you're going on to something else after that. Yeah. And a uh, $30 um, four packs, a tough sell sometimes. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> when I can go home and, uh, add vodka to orange juice and it tastes the same it's like uh, do i want to pay 30 dollars? i don't know right yeah that's a good orange juice too it's um uh, yeah absolutely <laughs> fresh squeezed right exactly um i also think seltzers are probably going to stick around um you know a lot of people at the beginning were saying that it would be like the hard root beers and hard orange sodas and stuff like that mm-hmm. but you know i think those were also sickingly sweet and people just got tired of those but seltzers are just i mean they're refreshing they on a hot day like if i don't i don't want to drink a stout necessarily uh i will grab a mango seltzer a watermelon seltzer or something mm-hmm. because it's it's better in 90 degree heat than grabbing pretty much any beer i can think of right didn't weigh you down yeah exactly <laughs> and i don't even like seltzers that much but <laughs> when it's when it's 90 degrees out and i'm doing yeah. something outside if i if i want to drink i'm gonna grab a seltzer right definitely uh we're we gonna see ryan guy seltzers anytime do you have any plans yeah not happening <laughs> <laughs> they're staunchly in that uh, field yeah, yeah. no i totally I mean, it's understand. one of those like you know we're a brewery we like beer we want to keep making beer right we don't really want to devote time to the seltzer market when you know, there's really three or four brands are dominating everything anyways. Right. So do we want to compete to clean up the scraps or not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just the logistics of, you know, getting the equipment in that we would need to make seltzers and all right. of that logistics just uh, don't seem worth it. So. Yeah, exactly. It can definitely, definitely, you know, don't want to take away from some of the other things you're doing. And especially if you don't see a, uh, an exciting angle on it. Uh, right. Whereas like, um, 
Upland just released their uh, Naked Barrel uh, hard seltzers that they're doing, but they are like blending their sours in. So they're kind of like connecting what they've done in the past. They're with the hard seltzer market with like fresh fruit and things. So it's kind of like, it's more like a beer seltzer hybrid than like a true seltzer. And unless you're yeah, going to do it differently, why make interesting. it? Interesting. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do we, do we really need more? Uh, do we need a Rheingeist mango seltzer as well when there's... <laughs> Seven, 17 other on the market right probably not i could crush a 19 two of that that's for sure i'd, I'd be looking <laughs> forward to that for sure <laughs> well that's the thing it's one of those like would it sell absolutely would it right. would it probably beat some of our current products that we have that you know our whether it be our seasonals or something else probably but if 90% of seltzers are the three big brands and we only have 10% for the other to make up the rest mm -hmm. it's probably not worth it for us to do so right you guys already have such an amazing line of like uh ciders as well so that's kind of like why would you you know you wouldn't want to dig into that either like the all the cider guy stuff just right. does so well yeah and then like bubbles for example um right. you know if we started making a seltzer are people going to go over to the seltzer instead of bubbles right do we want that to happen you know <laughs> yeah definitely yeah all those and they're just all so well done and well made also, yeah, you mentioned Vienna style lagers. Like, I felt like this year was kind of like the year of craft Vienna style lagers. Like, every, it seemed like a lot of craft breweries this summer were doing like Mexican style lagers, the Vienna style lagers, where you know, do do uh, doing it well or not, but uh, adding lime to them and whatnot. But, right, uh, it was definitely definitely a trend this year for sure. Well, it's one of those things where have, I'm sure you've seen the like evolution of a a beer snob. Uh, images where it's like it starts off as like a, a fish and it above it it says IPAs and then it becomes like a walking fish and it says stouts and right. you, know, you progress through the beer snob until you get to you know hazy fruity stuff but then you always go back to lagers at your, right. in your final form yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it's like as true as that is and so many people in the beer industry that actually work in the beer industry like we just go drink lagers now that's just right. what we want um we make a, a great Vienna lager that we made one year, but nobody bought it because mm. it's just, it's not a sexy brand. It's not a sexy right. style. So it could be the best Vienna lager ever, but it's just going to sit on the shelf. Yeah. It's also, again, you know, going to price, even, you know, it's not that expensive, but sometimes, yeah, $15, six pack of lager is a tough sell as well. When you're <laughs> true, it's a, you true. know, when people are looking for that kind of flavor, it's like, all right, all right, what can we do about this? Um, <laughs> So like, uh, I know you can't say Ryan Geist, uh, but what <laughs> do you feel like, um, are some like really underrated breweries right now or ones that you think are kind of like not getting their due on the map at least, or, uh, you can just say one that's fine too. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot that I think I, I tend to go back to those breweries that are, making really great beer and are even, you know, our large breweries, but like they just don't get talked about amongst beer crowds mm -hmm. because they're not the new thing or whatever. But, you know, places like Upland, for example, you know, you rarely will see them mentioned in like a lot of Facebook beer groups, Instagram beer groups, things like that, just because they've been around for a while. They're not necessarily at the top of someone's mind, but they're, they make, incredible sours um but i feel like they just kind of get pushed to the side a little bit just because they're not the the newest thing on the block mm -hmm. um but i also feel that way about yeah like sun king for example i mean some of the best beers that i've had from indiana breweries are from sun king mm -hmm. but th they get you know they don't i don't think they get the love from the beer snob world that uh, they probably deserve, especially if you actually go to the brewery and like get some of their small batch draft only offerings, right. um, making just a ton of good beer that I'd like to see them appreciated more in the scene. Yeah. So people focusing more on like sunlight and Osiris and whatnot, and not necessarily getting into those. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah, obviously those are the, what's you what you see the most because those sell the most on the shelf right, to right. <laughs> the, yeah. the, the common consumer but when you go to sun king and you see that you know their barrel program is outstanding and 
they're making great stouts and porters and all that stuff. Um, you know, I would just, I would encourage people to, to try out some of those breweries that you may not have been to in a while because they're, they're not the newest thing. Yeah. I think especially, I mean, we see it a lot up here in Northern Indiana where it's like, there's such a flood of breweries and people who want to try new things in all these new breweries that it's like, as soon as you hear about one in planning, uh, people are just like, when are they open? When are they open? When are they opening? And then, <laughs> For sure. then they open and people are like, they are quick to rush in and like judge. And I'm like, I oh, like yeah, to go places absolutely. when they open. It's like, sweet, new place. I want to go support them right now, but I'm going to come back in six months and yep. see how this has changed because like, I feel like every business should just open without telling anyone and <laughs> just like, <laughs> oh, okay, wow, they're open now. Cool. They've been, instead of, you know, day one, they have a hundred customers come in and it's like, wow, yeah. our staff doesn't know what they're doing. And there's, you know, what, no matter how well-trained you are, it's tough on the first day. Yeah, for sure. And especially since so many breweries are being opened by people that, their only experience is home brewing right. and suddenly they're now going from like their, you know, gallon system to uh, a five barrel system. Uh -huh. It's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff that you need to adjust to figure that out. And so, yeah, I, I typically, if a new brewery is going to open, I will wait six months at least before yeah. I stop in and actually give them a, a judge. Right. Yeah. I like to see if I do have a brewery that I'm like, oh, maybe they're not like doing their best stuff right now. Uh, I then like to go see how long they've been or like, oh yeah, man, they've only been open less than a year. Like maybe we'll yeah. see, we'll see. Give them some yeah. time. <laughs> One other underrated brewery I wanted to mention um, in Cincinnati specifically, mm -hmm. it's the brewery that it, when people say they're going to Cincinnati, I always recommend it as number one. Um, it's called Nine Giant. Okay. Just a yeah. small, they don't distribute anywhere. Um, it's a pretty small place, but I have never once had a beer from them that I thought was anything other than great. So, uh, if you're in Cincinnati, I'd, I'd recommend swinging by yeah. Nine Giant. Awesome. I have not heard of them, so they, I'll definitely they, put they, them on my list. Also have great food as well. Oh, cool. Um, phenomenal food for a brewery. So awesome. I'll have to check them out for sure. So still early in the year, 2021 just started. Thank God. And uh, yeah. Yeah. so what are some fun things that we have to look forward to from Ryan guys this year? Um, so, uh, I, I do have some slides if you'd like me to yeah, definitely. share yeah, my screen be able you. to just pop it right up. Talk there. about yeah, it as definitely. well. Yep. So yeah, first thing, um, you know, as we've seen like customers gravitating towards grabbing larger pack sizes, mm -hmm. um, you know, our, our truth 12 packs absolutely blew up this year. Um, you know, part of that, oh, obviously yeah. COVID people staying at home, right. Grabbing right. Truth 12 <laughs> packs. Um, I think we, I don't know, in Indiana, it was well over 120% of what we anticipated selling in truth 12 packs. Mm. Um, so we decided to kind of keep that trend going, came out with some dad 12 packs this year, uh, just for very limited um, accounts and some programming at some chains and stuff like that. But next year we'll have three 12 packs out. Um, so Mathlete is our locale IPA. Nice. I don't think any of that made it to Northern Indiana this year, unfortunately. It did not. Um, that package looks awesome. Yeah. So a little <laughs> bit of retro, retro vibe there. Um, uh, so that will be available, um, starting in March, April time. Um, again, because we couldn't test it with the six packs, I don't know how many, how many will come up to Northern Indiana market, but there'll definitely be some floating around. <clears throat> um, and specifically with that beer, you know, the locale market is obviously growing right now as well. Definitely. Um, we purposely, you know, we didn't want to have a race to the bottom calorie wise because then you sacrifice a lot of flavor. So while there are, you know, 98 calorie IPAs out there, sub sub hundred calories, I have yet to find too many that actually like satisfy my IPA need. Right. Um, so we purposely were down at 115 calories. So hmm. we kept, kept some of that in there to maintain the flavor profile that we wanted rather than just making a race to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, as unbiased as I can be, I think it's the best locale IPA I've had. Um, 
a close second i would say is probably like fly jack by firestone walker mm-hmm. um but awesome. yeah so if you see that around definitely give it a try uh fronds our october fest we're gonna put that in 12 packs this year and then we'll do our dad holiday ale 12 packs as well sweet that looks amazing yeah people like you said it's yeah must be covid but 12 packs have been moving flying off the shelves even 12 pack varieties all of that for sure yeah i wish we could do a 12 pack variety but (laughs) nothing nothing on the horizon it's a little work intensive i know for the breweries for sure absolutely who don't have four million dollar canning lines (laughs) uh Next thing that we got new coming out, um, I took the image of the can off because we haven't released it as a brewery yet. So I didn't figure they would want me Project. releasing it. <laughs> first um, time. First, year, first. first time on Citywide's <laughs> podcast. Heck yeah. Uh, I think we'll save that for Instagram probably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a Shandy coming out. Um, we've done some Shandies before on draft, but decided to can one for this summer, especially since you know, so many people are going towards fruited things anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be four and a half percent lighter, refreshing, just, you know, very summer appropriate, uh, grapefruit and orange for that shandy. So, uh, we made a grapefruit and orange shandy prior to this that went over incredibly well in draft. This recipe is a bit different for the package, but, um, should be kind of similar. So looking forward to that. Awesome. Uh, we'll continue with our unfiltered juicy IPA series called Cloud Harvest. Um, 04 is out right now um, or the next week or two in every, in all of Indiana. Um, and then we'll have 05 sometime during the summer, 06 sometime during the fall. With these, we're just you know messing around with hop combinations. Um, pretty much all of them are inspired by like a tropical location. So uh, this Cloud Harvest 04 is an island off of Australia. So we use some Australian hops in that one. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, just kind of trying to use different places as inspiration for the flavor profiles. Yeah, no, all those are always, those are always top tier six packs for sure. That if people, people who know about them, I think if people pass them up and then the people who know about them are like, you still got some cool, perfect. I need to get these because they are always just yeah, such top awesome. notch. <laughs> yeah, and 04, uh, I think 01 has been my favorite of the first three, but 04 is very similar to 01 it uh, was. So um, I think I have a case right now in my beer fridge. So <laughs> that's what I'll be drinking for the next yeah. little bit. Hell yeah. Uh, this is a new product. Um, I don't know that we've released the image either, but it's coming out in like weeks. So I, I figure can blur we could, it if I need to. Let me <laughs> we could take a look at it. <laughs> uh so this is actually going to replace our little bubs offering. You know, we came out with little bubs because of the locale trend um, so that bubbles drinkers would have a locale option. Uh, you know, it did well, but it's time to innovate out of that and kind of go a different direction. So mm-hmm. kind of looking at, you know, the trend of fruited sours and all that, we're going that route. This is not like a heavily fruited sour. It's not going to look like orange juice when it comes out or anything. Um, it's just a lightly fruited sour, very approachable. It's not going to be super tart. It's not going to be puckering. Um, kind of more along the lines of like a sea quench from Dogfish. Gotcha. Those like Berlinery kind of lines, like kind of like along those of that sourness level, and also maybe not as yep. heavily weeded, but that kind of style. Yep. Yep. Perfect. So that'll be year round offering awesome. starting in end of February into March. Uh, one of the more exciting things, you know, we do have that cider line that you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, up until now, the cans have looked pretty much identical. The only difference is instead of Rheingeist, it's that Cidergeist. Yeah. (laughs) So it's somewhat confusing to customers to be able to easily tell like, oh, this is their cider line. This is their beer line. Even with bubbles being kind of somewhere in between, it's technically not a cider, um, it is, uh, right. it is officially an ale. So, but people still call it a cider, put it in the cider doors, which is fine. Right. Right. Uh, but we wanted to kind of differentiate like, Hey, these are our actual ciders, our actual, you know, we, we can't advertise as gluten-free unfortunately, but mm-hmm. our stuff that is appropriate for that crowd, um, these cans. So definitely doing awesome. a little redesign. Oh yeah. So those, those will be the cans. 
Yeah, that's, um, that's awesome. I love that. <laughs> that looks so yeah. great. So yeah, go in the retro vibe again. We yes. tip, we often go the retro vibe uh, around guys, but always goes over well. Our design team is phenomenal. Always um, making impeccable designs that are perfect for what we need. So oh yeah, um, our semi dry cider, which is currently in the red can, is changing names to Zappy. Cool. Um, changing recipes a little bit down to five percent ABV, so they're they're all five percent across the board. Um, but should be pretty much the same flavor profile. Uh, Swizzle, which obviously is has al- already been out for a while as well. And then we're going to add a rotating cider skew this year. Um, Snug is out right now in place of semi-dry as we transition to Zappy. Um, but it'll come back next winter in its own can. We have a honey cider that'll be out kind of in the summertime. And then elderflower cider in the spring. Awesome. That's great. So looking forward to those. Yeah. No, those look awesome. That'll fly off the shelf, I think, just from the package alone. <laughs> yeah. And then with Zappy, we'll also have single serve 16 ounce cans. Um, you know, a lot of convenience stores and such that sell a lot of singles. Mm-hmm. Um, that package will be in there. I mean, anybody's obviously welcome to buy it, but specifically <laughs> gas stations and whatnot are the ones that obviously sell those singles a lot more often than uh, bigger liquor stores. So. Right. Definitely. Um, and then uh, I don't know if people saw last year, we gave away a truth vending machine. Uh, it, was, it was a retro vending machine that we uh, decorated with truth designs. And uh, so the guy that won that recently acquired that, put it in his garage. So now he has just truth at all times coming out of, the, coming out of that. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was been given away now, so we have to move on to other things. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We have four text to win programs we're going to do next year. Um, and, you know, I think they're unique things that not of other local breweries are doing. Um, even larger breweries, I don't, I haven't seen items like this given away very often. So, me neither. You know, I think it's unique. And unfortunately, again, there's only one of these things. So, only one person is going to have this. Right. But, um, it will be awesome if you win it. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, giving away this uh, vinyl record cabinet, um, twenty four hundred dollar ish value <laughs> between the console and the turntable and all that. Yeah. Um, and with that, obviously, truth is the focus on that one. So you'll see it at the citywide uh, downtown location, um, and you'll see it all over social media and some other places around town, probably. Oh, definitely. And then I, later on this year, we're doing a hot air balloon adventure with Cloud Harvest. We're doing a, uh, we're going to custom build a tiki hut in somebody's backyard with Wowie. And then the fourth one, we're going to be uh, a weekend stay at Airbnb near the Joshua tree. So, oh, nice. Awesome. A lot of exciting text to win stuff. Definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. And then just lastly, we're kind of doing some more cocktail stuff um, this year, ideally as well, where we're going to pair kind of our Fruiterdale line with some cocktails and kind of have easy recipes that customers can just kind of grab a six pack of Zango, grab a uh, handle of vodka, go home and and make cocktails. Mm -hmm. So we'll hopefully have more of that through 2021 as well. Oh yeah, that's great. So yeah, that's uh that's the new stuff for Rengeist. Cool, amazing. Yeah, that sounds great. That is awesome. Well, I yeah, one final question to leave you with today. Uh what is right now if you had one beer to put right in front of you to drink, what would that be right now? Oh, I'll give you I'll give you my Rengeist answer. Okay, my, give me your my, give me my your... other answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh obviously a tough question. Um for the past couple of years, though, I have always said, I'm a big porter stout guy over mm-hmm. IPAs. Um, past couple of years, I've always said epic, big, bad Baptista, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that, that barrel aged stout um, with like cinnamon and Mexican chocolate. And uh, it's just so good. I oh, could drink yeah. it all day. Oh, yeah. Got some coffee um, in there too. Yep. Yep. I haven't, I honestly haven't had it probably in two years. I need to fix, I need to fix that, but 
uh it's kind of always held a place in my mind as one of the more delicious barrel aged uh i don't want to say pastry stout but dessert stouts yeah yeah definitely uh so yeah along that line the rheingeist product i actually have here with me right now i'm not gonna drink it because it's uh 16 percent alcohol and it's currently 1 <laughs> 30 in the afternoon but yeah uh it's our night whale yeah barrel aged night whale yeah i know i was hoping to see some of those come into my store but i have not the yet i didn't know how limited they were I, I can definitely look at getting you some. That I would be wonderful. Some That'd be wonderful around. to have. Yeah, I would, cool. I would love to acquire a few of those. For, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a huge stout. It's, like I said, 16%. Uh, we have three variations this year. The bourbon barrel, we have a rye whiskey barrel, and then a red wine barrel version. Um, they've all, they all are great in their own different ways. The red wine might be my favorite just because oh, it's yeah. so unique with I mean, any red wine agent we've done before has been kind of only finishing it in the red wine barrel. Mm-hmm. It's sat in bourbon barrels before that, but this is purely, it's sat in red wine <laughs> barrels the entire time. So it, you just get a ton of that wine tannins. Um, it's almost like you just blended red wine with a stout and that's what you get. Uh, it's phenomenal. Oh yeah. You always get that kind of like chocolate covered like red fruit note from those i feel like when you do the red wine stout absolutely it's just always just i feel like those are perfect for sharing especially because i'm like i don't know if i could crush a bomber of these but just like share it with a couple people because the flavor is always amazing yeah i mean i still crush a bomber by myself but (laughs) yeah i I probably should share it yeah (laughs) yeah definitely Uh, awesome amazing well nathan thompson rain guys brewery thank you so much for doing this with me today i really appreciate it for having me on yeah definitely you got you got to hit us up with any uh anything we should be following or just uh make sure uh where's ryan guys at on the socials uh i mean all the normal instagrams probably are most active um Facebook, we really just post essentially what we've already posted on Instagram, minus some things. Obviously, we, we're a very like graphic centric brewery. So mm-hmm. um, Instagram is definitely the place. I mean, we're on Twitter as well. I don't even have a Twitter, so I can't even tell you what our, our Twitter <laughs> presence is like. Uh, so Instagram and Facebook are definitely the, the ways to go. Awesome. Amazing. Well, definitely check those out. And, uh, at the same time, while you're doing that, make sure to follow Citywide. If you didn't uh, didn't uh, expand to this video or podcast from there, so all right, well, awesome. Thanks so much, man. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, have a great week.